morning and welcome to the September installment of Breakaway Funding's webinar series. This month we bring you Marketing Your Startup, Telling Your Story Your Way. We are delighted you have joined us today. This is Kim Caslionis, the founder and managing partner of Breakaway Funding and your host this morning. Now Breakaway Funding was created as a direct result of a two-pronged problem I encountered as the CEO of Circle Bank. First, lack of access to capital for our jobs creators, small to medium-sized businesses. And second, community banks struggle to lend. The solution? A fully integrated crowdfunding platform which would serve to match investors with businesses requiring capital to strengthen their balance sheets and position those companies for funding by traditional lending institutions. We call this collaborative solution the Community Capital Marketplace. It is the engagement of all members of our local economies, investors, business owners, entrepreneurs, and community financial institutions working in partnership to ensure capital is made available to propel innovation, job creation, and to provide opportunities for all types of investors, accredited and non-accredited. Our platform is a complete capital raising and investing ecosystem providing a standardized process for raising capital leveraging technology to drive down costs for issuers. It is a transparent due diligence system, including financial analysis tools to help investors make informed investment decisions. And finally, this marketplace is designed to provide community banks and commercial credit unions with a steady stream of new client relationships, and maybe one of those new relationships is you. To help everyone prepare for and participate in this exciting new marketplace, we provide a full complement of services and support from free educational webinars like today's event to post-raise investor relations care. In that regard, we are pleased to have with us an expert in the field of marketing, and we will hear from her in just a moment. To help set your expectation this morning, here is our agenda. I will begin with a few opening remarks followed by our presenter. There will be some time for Q&A throughout this presentation and at the end, so please take advantage of our experts' knowledge by typing in your questions in the chat box located on the lower right-hand side of your screen. We will close with some wrap-up thoughts. So let's begin. You're now officially in business. You want to stay in business and see your company grow. Marketing is an important effort in gaining prospect attention building product or service demand, and winning customers. Your marketing efforts are the sum total of the sales, pricing, promotion, and advertising efforts implemented to promote the flow of goods and services from your business to the consumer. It includes a lot of elements, like having the right merchandise or service, selecting the right location, enacting effective sales programs, and promoting your company and its wares to the buying public. It is easy for small business owners to find excuses for neglecting marketing, right? We've got a lot of things going on. Most small businesses operate on a no-frills budget, and many owners consider marketing something they cannot afford. Owners often say, I gotta pay the bills, marketing, I gotta cut. The question that then arises is how, without marketing, do you propose to gain those much-needed customers that mean sales? Well, to help us develop cost-effective ways to define our message, best communicate it, and help us get in the minds of our prospective customers, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our presenter today, Claire Price. Founder and CEO of CFP Media Group, Claire is a B2B marketing strategist and digital and content marketing consultant. During her career, she has been a business journalist, technology reporter, marketing executive, industry analyst, and prolific content creator. Her published works include five digital and content marketing playbooks, one entitled The Five Easy Pages, which you will have access to at the end of this presentation. Also, the new Silicon Valley cyber thriller, Web of Betrayal, and more than 700 articles in the areas of technology, marketing, business strategies, and growth. She is passionate about helping entrepreneurs, small business owners, and modern marketers increase sales and gain new customers through marketing plans and programs that deliver measurable ROI. Good morning, Claire. It's a delight to have you with us today. It's Kim. It's a pleasure to join you today and talk about telling your story your way. 
what we're going to be doing today is um, talking about the story. I know that a lot of times people think about, okay, well, I've got to communicate my message, I've got to get the word out. That's really old style marketing thinking. If you want to think as a modern marketer, you think about your story and how to best tell it. And as startup companies, entrepreneurs, and business owners, we have great stories to tell. I mean, think about it. We've left the safety and security of a day job for the thrilling roller coaster ride of a startup. So there's one thing I already know about you. You're passionate. Uh, you want to change things. You want to make a difference. You want to dream become a reality. And that's a powerful story. What we want to do today is help you tell it even better. And there's something else I've learned about helping entrepreneurs take their vision into the world. That we can get caught up in the straight jacket of marketing features and benefits, target customers, social media marketing channels, and lose the story that we need to share. We trade uniqueness for formulas, and uh, we get our story out there as someone else's idea of who we are and not who we really are. So today I'd like to strip all of that away and talk a little bit about how you tell your story your way. Conversations begin with you. This is the first myth I want to explode because we typically talk about how conversations have to begin with our customers and how they have to begin with um, our clients and prospective investor partners, et cetera. But in reality, the conversation begins with you, and these are the six steps we're going to look at. First, you have to know yourself to express yourself and to inspire your uh, customers and your audience to action. Secondly, you've got to get inside your customers' heads. I'm going to talk in detail about how we do that. The third thing we're going to cover today is how do you craft that compelling message that really becomes music to your customers' ears. Fourth, we're going to dive into that elevator pitch, that, that scary moment when you get in that elevator and um, a big name VC is standing in the corner and you really want to connect with that person. You've got 60 seconds. We're going to talk about how to do that. The last, the fifth thing we're going to talk about is the power of the tagline. This is something that entrepreneurs often ignore, and it's a very, very powerful message maker for you. And we're going to talk about how you can actually create a tagline for yourselves. And then fifth, I want to talk about storytelling for business. How do you get that story across? What are some of the techniques and tricks and tips you can use to really bring that story home? And one of the really great things about this is that as Kim mentioned, entrepreneurs, and I know this as a fact, being one myself, are always on a tight budget. So a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today are free, or you can do yourselves. You don't have to hire an expert. Uh, you do have to put a little bit of effort into it, and certainly um, it, it's good to get an expert when you can because they can provide you with that extra experience and that extra capability, but you don't, you don't need one to go through this, the steps that we're going to talk about today. So the first step is, as I said, know yourself and express yourself. This is your unique value, the value proposition. And I know you've heard about value propositions. You've probably written dozens upon dozens of those value propositions for your company. And the typical value proposition covers what you do, the problem you solve, how you solve it, and why people will pay to help you solve it. Now, as you notice, my voice got slower and more bored as we're talking about value propositions because they often are very, very boring and very straightforward. So I want to offer you another way to look at it. Sometimes you aren't solving a problem. What you are doing is you're offering an opportunity. I mean, honestly, what pain was... Facebook solving when it was launched. Well, you could say the pain of losing touch with friends, but really what made Facebook powerful, in my opinion, wasn't the pain they were solving, but the opportunity that they were presenting to get in touch with people that you'd lost touch with, to stay connected um, as your life journey went on from college to, to working to family, whatever. So why is that important to you? It's important because in the era of modern marketing, audience want 
experiences. They don't want to be communicated to. They don't want to be talked at. They want to experience your product and service, experience your value, your why. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Fresh experiences beat painkillers very often. Think about the apps you use. Are they painkillers or are they giving you a great experience? Well, they may not be killing pain, but they often are killing time. So we do have to keep an eye on that. But as you're thinking about your product or service and as you're thinking about your valid value proposition, I want to challenge you today to think about what is the unique opportunity or experience that you're offering people that they do not have today or they can't get as well as, as you can provide it for them. The second thing in knowing yourself is to know your why. Why are you doing this? Why did you start your business? Why are you still at it despite the brick walls and the, and the long over, uh, overnighters and the obstacles in your way and the thousands and hundreds of people probably telling you this will never work. So why are you still doing it? What is driving you to bring that product, that service into the market? Get in touch with that why and keep it in front of your face all the time. Um, there's a great TED, TED Talk um, from Simon Sinek who talks about uh, Apple's why and how that drove Steve Jobs every single day of his working life. So it remained powerful despite being a billion dollar company. The third thing to think about is what is your working style? Your working style is, and I just mentioned Steve Jobs, is often driven by the CEO's personality and the way they want to do business and how they want to connect with people and, and with the market and with the world. You can also drive your working style from a team approach, which is to have a group and have a group culture, group consensus about how you, you want to work with people. And again, why is that important? Because your working style drives the way people are going to connect with you. Your working style becomes one of your customer magnets. And the fourth thing I just want to briefly mention is your connection style. How do you like to communicate? How you like to communicate, how you want to reach the world, how you want to uh, create relationships impacts many of your marketing decisions. It impacts what kind of marketing use to use, what kind of campaigns you run, and what kind of uh, channels, marketing channels, whether they're social media or traditional marketing channels that you want to use. So think about these things past just the standard value proposition as you're going forward to build your company. The next thing we're going to talk about, and this is really one of my favorite topics, is getting inside your customers' heads. You know, we're constantly told, focus on your target customer, know who your ideal customer is, uh, get a good customer profile or persona, um, make sure that you've got the right target. I mean, you know, if I could see a, a hands raised, I'm sure everybody in the room would be raising their hands saying, yeah, I, I know i got to have a target customer. But seriously, do you want to be a target? Do you want a target on your back and somebody aiming at you? I know I don't. So instead of thinking about your customer as a target, let's think about how we get inside their heads. How do we get into their attitude, their lifestyle, their behavior, their needs, their wants and desires? What motivates them? What are their values? We're going we're gonna to unpack that a little bit as we go forward, but just thinking about them not as demographics, not you know gender, income, level of education for consumers or type of industry, sick code, whatever for a B2B kind of a play. What motivates them? And this is something I want to add to those of you who are focusing on the B2B market. Just because you're not focusing on the quote unquote consumer does not mean people aren't buying your products. So even if you are a B2B play, you want to get into something like a LinkedIn and look at the kind of things that your potential decision maker is posting or the groups they belong to, ways to figure out what is their, their attitude, their lifestyle, the kind of you know jokes they like to post. Those kind of things are really important in getting inside your customer's head because when you're in their head, and believe me, all the big consumer brands know this, you can influence their buying behavior in your favor. Now the big brands have 
dozens of expensive analytical tools and database platforms, retargeting, et cetera, um, to allow them to get inside their customers' heads. As a startup, as we've already talked about, you don't have that kind of budget. So here are three ways that you can get inside your customer's head. The first is build a character. Now, the marketing quote unquote term is persona. I like character better because you want to imagine someone playing a role in your company's story. You want to know everything about them. You want to know what type of nail polish they wear, what kind of beer they drink, what kind of car are they likely to buy, and how much are they willing to spend for that car. These lifestyle and attitude choices is what's going to get you to their focus. Now, for me, for example, with my novel, Web of Betrayal, and of course, you, you typically do this when you write a novel, but it translates well into your business personas as well. I built character profiles that had about 100 attributes and ran about 20 pages. I mean, I knew what kind of moral decisions these characters were going to make when they were presented with a dilemma. You don't necessarily have to go that far, but you can create a character and figure out how they think and how they're going to react. And that's the, the first way to get inside their head. The second way to get inside their head is to answer some key motivational questions. And I've got an entire worksheet that I use with clients on this, but let me just share three of those with you. The first is, what drives people to want to work with you? That can work for your customer, your investor, uh, the top talent that you want to acquire. What's going to drive them to choose you? Not your product or service category, but your specific solution to that to work with you. Secondly, a great question is to ask yourself, people are most likely to buy my product or service when X. What is the trigger that's going to cause them to purchase? Is it is it an income trigger, a lifestyle trigger, um, a cost a, a cost of doing business trigger? Knowing those triggers that are typical for your clients are really going to help you with making those decisions. And then a third one that I think is really important to ask yourself is, is my service or product one of four things? Is it essential? Is it important? Is it nice to have? Or is it a necessary evil? Once you know that, and obviously, our best customers are going to be the customers who consider it to be essential, but even those who consider it a necessary evil can spend a lot of money in order to get the answer to their question. Uh, the third thing I want to point out is you can use social media profiles very effectively and very affordably to create your characters. You can look at profiles, you can use um, the analytics that are available available like Facebook Insights, Twitter Analytics, and things like that to get inside their heads. So all of those are really a good step in creating a character and really beginning to think like the person that you are talking to. So let's dig a little deeper. When we think about getting inside our customer's head, again, the, the typical approach is let's talk about features, let's talk about benefits. You probably heard that, okay, we don't want to talk about features, although if your product is very technical and you're selling to a technical buyer, a technical decision maker, then features may be more important to them because they're going to be able to translate that feature into benefits for themselves. That's not as common in a, a broader business sale. So the feature is what your product or service does, the benefit is what the buyer receives. So say you're a bank, your feature is loaning money. The benefit to the business is the money to hire workers, buy equipment, uh, have operating capital. So it's important to know the features and benefits. That's a good, what I call, starting place, not, not the end and all. So, Let's talk about eliminating features and benefits and what else can we do. There are five things that I think you need to do to get inside your customer's head beyond features and benefits. The first is value. What is the intrinsic worth to your customer, to the community, or to the world of what you're providing? You should be able to describe that core value. If your product didn't exist, if your service did not exist, what hole is there in the world today? What does your product provide in terms of a, of a real value to the market? 
And then the second thing that you want to look at is what's the motivation your customer has to purchase your product? And, and not just at the moment of buying, why do they even show up? Why do they even take a look at your website or click on your email link or respond to you in any way, shape, or form? What's that motivation that's getting them started on their buyer's journey and then moving, hopefully, to that final purchase decision for what you have to offer? And the, the last part, there's three things together. What are their needs, wants, and desires? Critical, again, for getting deep into the motivation and why people want to work with you. So let me give you a couple of examples. The first example is if your customer needs to save money, they value the best price for their service. So they're motivated by cost savings. Second example, if your customer desires to lose weight, they value health, they value appearance, and they are motivated to purchase low-fat foods, an exercise program, health supplements, etc. And our third example is, for example, if your customer wants to send their child to college, they value education and they're motivated to purchase a college savings plan, college prep courses, tutors, etc. So hopefully you kind of see how it works to go beyond features and benefits, and I'd love to explore this in more detail uh, with you in the question and answer section. We're going to switch topics a little bit and dive now more into creating a compelling message. So, um, Kim, is there anything on the, the, the features and benefits that I've just outlined that, that you, you might want to explore a little further before we move on? Well, I think that one of the questions you have already answered, and the, the question is, I've got target customers, so how can I get inside their head? So I think you had some really good suggestions on the ways in which business owners can scour the social media channels to see what the behavior of the prospective target market might be. So I would say if there's anything else you would like to elaborate uh, on the just a couple of sections that you've just uh, completed, um, you know, we're open to hearing some more concrete ideas on how we can really uh, figure out how to get inside their head. Okay, let me give you a great example from social media. Absolutely only cost you some time, and that is to really dive into, uh, and I'm going to use Twitter as an example, but it could work for LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Instagram, any of your other social channels. Um, take a look at your followers. Take a look at do do maybe a, a one hour to you know a half a day, depending on what kind of analysis time you've got, and look at what they're posting, who their followers are, look at the look to recognize patterns of behavior. You know, are they posting mostly jokes? Are they asking questions about um, different products and services? Do they really focus on specific social issues? That's going to tell you a lot about them. And really, for a couple of hours of research, you can you can come up with a lot of information. And what I would suggest you do as you're pulling that information is to chart it. Uh, you could use Google Docs, a spreadsheet, um, and just kind of kind of get the, the, the patterns of what people are looking at. You could create categories like, are they mostly interested in social? Are they mostly interested in business? Are they mostly interested in causes? And kind of uh, check mark al along as you're looking at, at these different followers and and from that analysis, you can have a really good pattern of behavior that you can then use as part of your decisions on what you do for marketing campaigns and that kind of thing. I think that's great. And I think before you move on, just one more time, if you could just recap why features and benefits, which we have been pounded into our brain, are so important for us to point out and to really hone in on, they're not that important. Um, I think they're a good foundation. I think you do need to know them, but I, but, but what happens too often is that people stop there, and they go, okay, I know what my features are, I know what, how I benefit, and I never connect them to the attitude, the lifestyle, the motivation of, of the uh, potential customer or client. So they, they overlook the needs, wants, and desires, which is really where you connect with that that particular customer, and I'll, I will give you a consumer example. Um, 
Colgate, when they bring out a new uh, kind of toothpaste, and I actually did some work with Procter & Gamble, so I do know how they go through their brand process, they will actually sit down with a brand book and they will go through what is, what, what is the, the person's desire, what do they have to have in order to purchase this toothpaste. So if their desire is whiter teeth, then that's what's going to be branded on, on the packaging, that's where the commercials are gonna, gonna flow to, et cetera, et cetera. So getting in touch with that deep desire, is that if, if, if whiter teeth is driving me, then I'm gonna spend more to get that result than I would for something else. So it is really powerful to, to get into that level of, of thinking. Excellent, so let's, let's keep moving forward. Okay. So the next thing that we want to talk about is how do you create messages that are music to your customers' and clients' ears? How do you, how do you make it so compelling that they, they can sit and they can listen to you all day? Now, we know that there are brands that are able to do this to the point where customers will eagerly look for them, they will eagerly post about them in, in, in the case of, of now several brands, but uh, even in the old days, uh, customers would actually get their brands tattooed on their body. Uh, Harley Davidson is a is a good example of a brand that um, became such music to their their customers' ears that they were willing to put it on their skin. So let's talk a little bit about how you can create that kind of a message. There are five things that I think you need to focus on to create a compelling message. The first one, and this again it turns turns the tables a little bit on the on the typical thing. What we typically think of when we want to create create a, a compelling message, at least in the you know old style marketing, is what do I have to offer? What what do what do they need? What can I offer them? I think that's lower down in the category. The first thing that you want to think about is when they're done listening to you, whether it's a video, whether it's a, whether it's a blog post, whether it's an infographic, um, picture series, however you're communicating, what do you want that person to do when they're done? Do you want them to, to make a phone call? Do you want them to share this with their, their friends? Do you want them to uh, click on your link, uh, go to your website, uh, download a coupon? Put the, put the end first. So what do you want them to do at the end? And that will then drive the other elements of your message. The second thing that I think you need to do, and again, this is something that, that big global brands do really well, what's your hook? What's going to hook them? What's going to hold their attention? What is that one thing? And then the next thing is your one thing. What is the most important thing that you have to offer? And then what is your need or how can you how can, how can we help you what is what can you offer them and then what kind of of offer gift opportunity uh, what's in it for me for the customer uh, do you want to present to them so those are the five elements that we want to think about as we are going forward with creating our message so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to dive into how you do that in 60 seconds so here's kind of my formula for that 60 second commercial. The hook is a question, a, a controversy, an intrigue, um, spending five seconds on the hook. Like, um, did you know that the, the type of handbag that you purchased can make you look 10 pounds lighter? Okay, I'm interested in that handbag if you're, if you're a woman typically. Um, or did you know that you can uh, gain a day in time by using this particular time-saving device, um, uh, business device. So that would be an example of the kind of hook that you would offer. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to say who you are, uh, th spending three seconds on that. What's your name? What's your company? What do you do? Make it quick. Don't go in. If there's one failure point that I see in this kind of a 
connection device is that once people offer their name, offer their product, they start their laundry list. Okay, I'm Claire from CFP Media Group, and we do content marketing and social media, and uh, we write white papers, we do commercials, we you know we we clean your windows, we wash your floors. You don't want to you don't want to fall into that laundry list tra trap. So that's why I advise you to only have one thing per commercial. So that one thing that you want that person to remember, because they're only going to remember one thing. So you want to spend that valuable 20 seconds on that thing. And it's, gonna, it's going to differ depending on who you're talking to. If you're talking to an investor, that one thing is what, what you can offer them to invest in you. If you're talking to a talented employee and engineer that you need to bring into your company, um, it's the one thing that's going to recruit them over the probably 50 other people that are trying to recruit them in this tight labor market. Then the next thing that we need to talk about is, is what the need is. What, what do you have to offer them or what do you need from them so that they know what, what the transaction is about. For an investor, you need to tell them. You know, I'm, I'm willing to give you 5% of my company for $150,000 uh, so that they know exactly what the need is that you're asking them. For, for an employee, it's, we need you to join us yesterday. For a customer, it's, uh, you, you need them to be a beta tester, uh, your first primary marquee customer, or you need them to potentially share with their referral network so you can bring in referrals. So that's the need that you want to make sure they know that. And then what are you offering to them? Are you offering them a meeting? Are you offering them a, an opportunity? Are you offering them a coupon or, a, or, or it's a specific product at a discount or through some special means because you want to make sure that you connect with them? And then the last thing you want to do, because people will have forgotten, you want to repeat your name and your company and your product. And again, two seconds, just, hey, I'm Claire with CFP Media Group. Nice to meet you. Move on. So now we're going to talk about the power of a tagline. And if you go back, and I'm going to go back to the 60 seconds here, why a tagline is important, it can do a number of things for you in the 60-second commercial. It can, it can provide you with the hook. It can provide you with a start of your, of your need or your offer. Um, it can be used as your company name or product or service. I, you know, uh, CFP Media Group, we are modern marketing for growing companies. So it can be used for an identification like that. So let's talk about what the, the tagline does. I think this is one of the most underutilized marketing opportunities that entrepreneurs in startups miss. They do a logo, they get a name, they often forget about a tagline, or they use what I would call, instead of a, an active tagline, a memory jarring tagline, they use a label. So they, are, uh, they do uh, business software. So their tagline is, you know, we write software for you or something like that. So it doesn't really give, them, give you anything to really connect to or remember them by. But, it's, but the tagline is critical both for a verbal and a written connection. Um, if a tagline is, is spoken, it's the way audio learners will remember you. And it's really part of the big three that I think you can't live without uh, when you're doing your marketing. You've got to have a name. You've got to have some kind of a logo, identifying mark, uh, brand, uh, logo, and then a tagline. So let's play a game. I know because we are in listen-only mode, uh, we, can't, uh, we can't do it like we would in a live room, but for each of you, uh, here's your opportunity to, uh, to think who the, the company is represented by this tagline. First one's the ultimate driving machine. The second one is I'm loving it. The third one is your world delivered. The fourth happiness, one of, I think, the most critically mistake taglines uh, I've seen, and I'll tell you why in just a second. And then the fourth one is the magic begins here. So I'll give you guys a second if you want to write down your answers and see how many you get, and uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll reveal the answers. 
So here are the answers. The ultimate drive machine, probably most of you got that one. It's been their tagline for decades is, is BMW. McDonald's, uh, I'm loving it. Uh, very well broadcast. Uh, Your World Delivered is an older AT&T tagline. They're using a, a Mobilize Your World now, uh, but this was one that was, was pretty popular about five years ago. Now, the one I hate, um, Open Happiness, uh, I think Coke has now changed it again. Big brands tend to change their taglines when uh, they get a new advertising agency. So uh, I think they're, they're on, you know, maybe number four. But, you know, their best tagline, um, forever immortalized, if not before, in the final Mad Men episode was, it's the real thing. So I don't, I don't think they should ever left that one, but they're not listening to me. And then the last one is the magic begins here, and that's, that's the Disney tagline. And I can, I'm going to go back and forth a little bit, so bear with me so I can show you how these big brand taglines are using these elements. The first one is, what's the primary value you want your tagline to express? Let's go back and look at, okay, so for BMW, it's the ultimate driving machine. So the value that it is expressing is that it is about driving, but it's also highly engineered. They chose ultimate machine for a reason, because the value is in that German engineering. The second one is, what's the primary experience you want your tagline to express? Now, I think there's two here, um, actually three of them. I'm loving it from McDonald's, that's an experience. I'm having a great time with my friends and my family. Um, let me challenge you on that one a little bit. Next time McDonald's commercial comes up, Take a look at this, because it's, it's very, very common. What do you not see in a McDonald's commercial? You don't see the food. You see the people having a great time. You see them loving, loving it, having family time, having, having buddy time, whatever, but you don't always see the food. I think there's probably a reason for that. Um, open happiness is another one that's more around the experience that, you know, if you drink Coca-Cola, you will be happy. And then, of course, the magic begins here, I think, is very experience-related, um, the magic of, of Disney, of the characters, the films, etc. So then the next thing, and I know we talked about features and benefits as being not as critical, but they are important to a tagline. What is, what is something that you want to make sure that you express? What feature, what you do for someone? I think the, the Your World Delivered um, is one that's built around features and benefits as opposed to some of the other ones. I also think the BMW tagline is built around the features and benefits to a certain extent because they're talking about the benefit of that German engineering. And then the last thing is, who are you connecting with? Now, typically in a tagline, uh, you don't see the person that uh, you don't hear you're connecting with you. It's more like you or it's implied. But trust me, when a good tagline writer writes a tagline, they know exactly who they're talking to. So those are the ways that I would uh, think about the tagline. And one thing I want to mention to you is don't assume you have to bundle all of these into a single tagline. If you look, the taglines that I showed you, and I'll go back again real quickly, they really focus on maybe one or two of those attributes. They don't focus on all of them. Your World Delivered, as I said, is more of a feature benefit tagline, whereas The Magic Begins Here is truly an experience tagline. So don't assume that all five of these have to be jammed into every tagline. The other thing I would recommend is that you think about the length of your tagline. It used to be that we would give people, uh, when we were writing taglines, we'd say you can have up to 10, 10, maybe even 11 words for tagline. Not true anymore. I'd say three to seven words. Uh, if, and again, going back, you'll see most of these are two, three, four words. So it's got to be short, got to be sweet. So I want to, uh, as we're starting to wrap up and get into question time here, I just want to focus on the last step that I talked to you about, and that is how to be an effective business storyteller. Now, when I began this presentation, I mentioned that I think storytelling is the most important way that you can connect to your audience. Not through communication, not by messaging, although you need to build a messaging architecture and a communication architecture in order to be an effective storyteller. You don't want to, again, like with features and benefits, you don't want to stop there. You want to take that foundation and then you want to build a story on top of it. So what do you want to do? You want to use the same qualities that great novelists, script writers, and film directors use. And there are four elements to think about. The first is character. 
We talked a lot about character uh, in getting inside your customers' heads. The second is plot. Do you need a plot for your business story for your for your 60 seconds? You bet you do. You you need to know what the conflict is. You need to know what you're going after. Um, you need a plot. It might be a one-word plot, but it's a plot. You also need to know what the conflict is. Again, what are you resolving? What pain are you solving? What problem are you addressing? What experience or opportunity are you offering? And then you need a story arc. How are you going to move your customer, your client, from the beginning of the story, which is, hi, introduce yourself, I'm, I'm Claire, uh, to the end of the story, which is, I can help you develop modern marketing for your growing business. So, and a story, the story arc in between is elements of surprise, elements of conflict, elements of, of resolving conflict. Um, I was enough uh, last week to hear from a brilliant, brilliant uh, screenwriter, uh, spoke to our local writers group here in uh, the Sacramento area, I, actually he works out of Davis, and he said, uh, it, uh, Sterling Anderson, and what he's, he's written for uh, films, he wrote, um, wrote films for Sidney Poitier and for some of the older actors, most recently he was the main um, scriptwriter for a show called The Unit. And what he said is, you have to write, and I thought this was brilliant for B2B marketers, for B2C marketers, as well as for somebody who's writing a, a story or a novel. You have to write in scenes. And what is a scene? A scene is the main character not getting what they want. They, and, the, and the story moves as each time the character goes out and tries to solve their problem, is frustrated, can't get it done, is, is thwarted by uh, either a person or some kind of other um, obstacle. They don't get what they want and they, ha and they have to move to the next stage. And when they get what they want in that final scene, the story is over. If you think about how you can craft a business story thinking about your customer Think about what they needed and they don't have. You created a solution for your product or service to solve that problem. So how many different things could that person try along the way before they got to your solution that solved your problem? I think that's really a, a really fabulous way to, to think about storytelling. And let me just kind of start to wrap up here by giving you some other ways that you can use in your storytelling. Humor, always wonderful. When, when I'm saying kidding around, meaning have that child inside you for, for your storytelling. Um, I think this is a great example of uh, my kid here. Um, he's on the road. He's a hobo. Um, recognizing and bringing out the conflict that is created by your product or service not being there when that person needs it. Being unorthodox, um, you know, either in your visual or your approach or the way you deliver your product or service can be a, a great uh, storytelling mechanism. And sparking curiosity, maybe hiding back a little bit, you know, making it a, a, a reveal situation where the person is kind of hanging there saying, tell me, tell me, tell me, and then uh, finally they get the answer. I think I've already talked about the last two, and I want to show you some examples of um, visual storytelling uh, in some videos that we're going to show real quickly because I know we're going to start to run out of time here. But there's the, there's the textual storytelling and I think more and more people are wanting to go to a visual storytelling approach. So here are some of the things to think about in visual storytelling. Imagery and textures. How on a video? I'm going to show you delighting the senses. I'm going to show you that too in just a minute. Um, how do you create a really nice ambiance and how do you invoke emotion? The videos I'm going to show you coming up right now are going to show you how in a video you can actually do all of that. It doesn't have to be something that people can actually touch, actually put their hands on, actually smell. You can invoke all of that when, when a video or another piece of storytelling is done right. I'm hoping that, that this is coming across well um, 
for you. It looks like it's half screen on my side, so I apologize for that. I tried to, tried to do a bigger screen, but we had to embed, embed this. But just look at the textures that this company, who is a B2B company, it's, it's Squarespace, a web developer, is able to offer to you. And if you do click on the YouTube link above, uh, I don't know, we can probably send that out to you after this. You can actually uh, get the, the, the audio as well. So that's the one example I wanted to show you about how you can, you can make a very uh, visual story even in a video. Okay. Um, this, is, this one is really great. There is a trend in branding and in, in marketing that is becoming more and more popular today. And it's, it's, called, it's what I call the invisible brand. Um, I just wrote, a, wrote an article for Relevance Magazine uh, on uh, how do you create an invisible brand even when you're not using video, but I just have to show you this one because it's a great example of how you, do, how you tell a story and then the brand appears in the very last reveal. This one is not as powerful without the sound, so I really encourage everyone to go take a look at it. What, what you're actually hearing as people are, are doing is they're talking about what uh, something that they have to make a decision about whether they need to stay or whether they need to go to uh, take a trip. And it's really clever and well done, so I really encourage you, you to take a look at it. And we will be sending everyone a copy of the recording of today's webinar, so they will be able to uh, grab the links that are on these slides and take a look for themselves. Perfect, because honestly, this is, this is one of the best storytelling videos that I've seen in, in quite a while, and I, I would really encourage you to, to, take, to look at it several times and really analyze it for yourselves, because uh, it's got a lot to offer you in terms of developing your, your storytelling. Just wanted to summarize for you what we talked about. First thing, you've got to know yourself and your business for making those really important connections. The second thing we talked about is getting inside your customer's head, and that's really diving into and focusing on their needs, wants, and desires. For your message, you need to know what you want your customer to do, and you need to know what is the one thing that you want to offer them and the need that you have that they can fulfill for you. That's going to make your message really strong, powerful. And then fourth, make sure if you don't have a tagline today, please think about building one for yourselves and getting one into your marketing uh, tomorrow. And then fifth, embrace your business and tell your story your way. There's, I think we've talked about a lot of ways to tell stories. Happy to, to talk to anybody after this event. And uh, let's ha take some questions. Okay, I think we got enough for maybe one, uh, possibly two questions. So while we're on the topic of stories, uh, we have what are the best kinds of stories to use for B2B business conversations? I actually break stories into, into a couple of different categories. Um, the first category I would say is the, is the um, anecdote, which is kind of a, a life experience, um, small story that you can tell that people can relate to. Maybe it's uh, a problem that you solved or something that relates to your business. Another uh, great story is, is the narrative uh, that kind of tells the journey that you went through to get from where you are to where you left to where you are today. Then there is the conflict story that is setting up uh, a, a, an important decision. Uh, the, the Choice Hotel one, again, when you get to hear the, the audio, is really clever that way. Um, you know, people getting knee surgery and having to make decisions, people, people having, you know, kids who are in a, a move situation and don't want to move. So that conflict story is another, an, another really good way to go as well. And then there's the inspirational story. I did it. You can too. Those are all good ways to, to, to start the storytelling process. Excellent. And maybe just uh, briefly, is it possible for a company to do too much storytelling? And if we are a company that does too much telling, uh, storytelling, how do we scale it back to improve sales? Um, 
I don't think that, I think we have moved to the, to the point where customers want stories and they want experiences, but I do think there is a possible gotcha or pitfall in that, and that is not wrapping the story back to your intent and what you want them to do. If you just tell the story and sort of leave to how do I respond to that, uh, that's going to not give them enough to close the loop and, and make the, the sales decision. So it does have to wrap back to the answer to this dilemma, the answer to this conflict is you've got to buy this product or you have to invest in my company or you have to join my team. Excellent. I mean, we've got a number of other questions. I'm wondering perhaps if you might have some time to actually write the responses to some of these additional questions, or if people want to um, I would love set out to. questions at Breakaway Funding, that would be great. And then we can also include them as part of the takeaway. So Claire, I'm afraid that we are out of time for now. I do want to thank you very much for your inspiring uh, presentation. Here is Claire's contact information if you'd like to reach out to her after uh, the webinar for any specific additional questions you may have about your company, about your messaging, and how to get those conversations going and making them count. So a couple of my takeaways from today's uh, messages are stories help make you memorable. I think people are, it's easy to help people get engaged when you're telling a story as opposed to just talking to people. So think about those stories that can help you engage with your target market. We talked a lot about taglines, that they're very powerful and uh, they are underutilized. Hopefully all of you guys got an A plus on the uh, tagline test. Claire is available to help you. The 60-second clock, trying to beat the 60-second clock, the elevator pitch. It takes practice to put a thoughtful 60-second elevator pitch together. So again, spend some time to really uh, get that concise. Claire is available, again, to help you should you have any questions. Uh, what did you take away today? Send us out of Twitter. We'd like to know what you got out of today's webinar. I would like to thank Claire once again uh, for sharing with us how we can make every conversation count. We will be sending you a recording of the presentation. You will be able to access all of those links. You will also have the access to Claire's uh, contact information. As usual, we would love your feedback, so please, uh, with presentation link, we will also be sending you a survey. Uh, please give that back to us. We'd like to continue to bring you uh, webinars and presentations that are meaningful for you. We invite you to other upcoming events. Next Tuesday, we have a much deeper dive into the world of crowdfunding. September 29th, actually being offered through Compliance Online. I will be doing a deeper dive into crowdfunding and the world of community capital marketing. A fee for this particular event. You can register at that link that you see there. Um, so if you want a deeper dive, please come and join us. We will be back next month uh, at our free webinar talking about the Adventure Exchange featuring Sam Guzik. Uh, Sam will be talking about one of the bills that he authored known as the Main Street Growth Act. Uh, the Main Street Growth Act is the creation of a new exchange like the New York Stock Exchange that will create a marketplace to promote liquidity for venture securities, which basically means it's a vehicle through which investors can buy and sell private placement investments in your company. So to help incent and to encourage uh, investing in companies like yours. As a reminder, if you are a business owner or an entrepreneur seeking to raise capital, I invite you to give us a call at the number here or email us at k, email me at kcastleonis at breakawayfunding.com. I would love to uh, how the community capital model can work for you. We want to thank you all again for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great week.